Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Today's video is about the homopolar motor and how I actually found that the spinning armature example of a homopolar motor supports the uh, particle model. So, but what is a homopolar motor? Well, as I usually do, I head to Wikipedia to get a, a nice explanation, at least normally understandable, but if I were to read this to you, even I get confused uh, reading through it. Uh, it it's probably could be understood, but it's uh, very uh, hard to follow. So instead, I'm going to uh, sh uh, show a, uh, a video. Uh, this is the video. The title is How to Build a Homopolar Motor. And this is the example of, a, of one. It's called the spinning armature. Normal explanation for this is the right-hand rule. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that. But to show you an example of the spinning armature and others, I'm going to show you a, a video. Homopolar motors are the simplest of all electric motors. While they're low torque and low efficiency, make them poor choices for actual use. Their adaptability and ease of construction make them perfect for technology demonstrations and science projects. This video will explain how they work and everything you need to know about constructing any of a number of different types of motors. Okay, well, you can see that there are quite a number of uh, different ways to demonstrate the homopolar motor. Uh, but the armature is, uh, is very simple. It's made up of three parts. It's got a, uh, a battery and a magnet and an armature that is, that is spinning. So uh, let's, excuse me, we'll move on here to explain a little bit about these parts. There is a conductor, and normally it's a copper wire that is the conductor somewhere, someplace in the uh, circuit. But as you saw in the rolling uh, battery, uh, the aluminum foil becomes the conductor. So the conductor could be just about anything that connects the plus of the battery to the minus. Batteries are normally one and a half volts, anywhere from AAA up to uh, D, mostly the smaller ones because uh, they move better. But the magnet now, the, the magnet is uh, a neodymium magnet, which are part of the rare earth magnet family, the most powerful permanent magnets in the world. They are referred to the NIB, which stands for uh, neodymium, iron, and boron, NIB magnets, the strongest ones in the world. Now, these magnets are, are quite strong and dangerous. In fact, I hurt myself when I first got these. So I'm going to show you here, if I can, a uh, just a, uh, this is a three- uh, disc magnets uh, separated by plastic at this point. And this, I'm going to show you a battery. This is a triple a double A battery. And now I'm going to uh, put it together. It sticks. You hear it click, come on. Take it off. It takes a little bit of force. Either way, it sticks either way. And I can turn the battery around. It sticks this way and this way and, and that way. So polarity here doesn't have much to do about what's going on. Uh, you, you put these on there. So uh, they're very strong. The bigger they are, the stronger they are. And they can, a strong magnet like this will attract 
something from a foot away and cause it to fly over and, and, and hit you. It depends on what that object is. It could hurt. So if you do one of these, and you can do this at home easily, uh, well, sometimes it's not easy to set up. That's what the uh, original video told us. It's not so easy to set up, but do it at home. Be careful. Well, a little bit more about the battery. Uh, if you look at the battery, uh, you got one and a half volts. Uh, normally, you don't have a resistor there. I, I put that there just to limit the current to one amp. Uh, one and a half volts, one and a half ohm, if that's what the ohm of, of this copper wire would be, uh, you would draw one amp. And that's, uh, other than that, there's, that's a lot of current for this little battery. The guy who did the video, he tested all these other uh, batteries and uh, found out that uh, some of them don't even last three minutes and others last almost eight. Uh, so uh, you do any number of experiments with this, you better have a bunch of batteries available because uh, uh, battery life isn't very high. But the, and the current is really high. Um, it's in order to develop a strong magnetic field around the wire. And as I said earlier, the standard model explanation is the right-hand rule. And... Uh, this is part of that same video, <clears throat> and he's showing that when the current, this is in terms of current, not G1 flow, when the current is flowing this way in this part of the uh, armature, and the magnetic field of the battery is going up at this point in the armature, then the force is on this point is into the page and therefore will turn counterclockwise and that's exactly what it does and in fact I'm going to show you the video as a reminder it all, the right hand rule only tells you the direction of the force doesn't tell you what the force is okay here's the it should rotate video. this way and it does it should rotate this way and it does it should rotate this way and it does. It okay, I, I looped that one so you could see it several times. And what you find with this is that the, uh, uh, first of all, it starts slow, but it does move counterclockwise. Well, now this is my explanation or the TPM explanation for this. And it's based on interacting magnetic fields. And, and this has been... I've used this uh, method to describe forces like this any number of times, uh, measuring the electron mass. Uh, it, it comes to play there, and, and it, it comes to play in here. And, and, and here's two interacting forces. The green vertical is the, uh, mag is the magnetic field going straight down. The green circle is the magnetic field around the wire. Uh, and uh, in this case, we're looking at the end towards the uh, this point. So the G1s are coming out of the wire and going. And the left-hand rule for TPM says it should be this way. And, of course, what happens is on this side, the G1s flowing from the magnet are in the same direction as from the wire. And it builds a nice clump of... It's almost double the amount of G1s uh, from if they were the same number. On this side, they, it also doubles, except that there's a lot of collisions, and therefore it doesn't get as big. That sets up an imbalance, causing a net force going this direction, which ultimately then pushes the wire from the front to the back. And that's what happens right here. It's pushing the wire at this point from the front to the back. On this side, by the way, of course, the uh, the uh, magnet, uh, as was shown in the picture, and, and he had it right, north at the bottom, south at the top, uh, as far as G1 flow that causes, that it goes from north to south, 
as, that's not a current flow, that's the opposite. A current flow flowing up in the center, down out here, and down out here. This side you got G1 is going to the right, this side to the left. So this is being pushed into the page. This is being pushed out of the page. This is being pushed out. That's being pushed in. And it spins counterclockwise. Uh, what he showed was the, is exactly this, but the standard model says it's <laughs> the right-hand rule. Tells you the direction it's going to spin, but it doesn't tell you what the force is. Particle model says it's this force that builds up uh, by the interaction of two magnetic fields. Well, there's a, it brings up an interesting point be, uh, about G2 gravity. Uh, this is a, a magnet. Uh, this is not... The arrows are for current flow, so it should actually be going the other way, but in this example. But these, the, the flow of the G1s, let's assume it is that way, uh, that's controlled by G2 gravity. Particle field is around here. It sets up a G2 force around here that controls the flow of the G1s around these. Uh, and the G2 gravity is sets up around the uh, copper wire and sets up a spiral type flow around the wire. Uh, that's the primary force controlling both magnetic fields. But now you have two interacting fields, and I'm going to call, give it a name, a new name, a secondary force that is built up by the interaction of the two primary forces. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, and, and what, what you have is uh, it is a large mass here and a small mass here. And by the way, that mass exists over the full length of the wire that is uh, has a magnetic field around it. If there's a magnetic field around it and there is the uh, mag uh, magnetic field of the battery going down, you're going to have a force going into the page. This represents the same force over here. It's got a, a. It's not just one one little clump. It's it's a pretty giving you a lot of you know more than just one one net force. You've got three or you've got many. Interesting point about about that, and it, it it's kind of interesting to to look at it. You've got a a small. Uh, and you and you got a large one, and in the middle you got a wire. And the uh, force is pushing the wire, and, and they go around together. They, they, they follow each other, pushing the wire around. Interesting dynamic. Interesting way. You, it's inter you can visualize that in your head, what's happening, even though you can't see it. Okay, what surprised me? Normally, I'm thinking of uh, something with electronics or some other uh, f part of physics. And I think, well, well we, if we did this experiment, I could uh, prove or give supporting evidence. Can't prove it, but I could give supporting evidence to the particle model. I've been working on this for uh, the homopoto motor for about a week. And I didn't see it until a couple of days ago. I'm going to repeat this uh, three-second video. It should rotate this way. And it does. 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 Okay. Uh, what's going on there, what's really important that I noticed is it starts slow. Why? We've already figured out that, yeah, it's going to go counterclockwise, but why does it start slow? Well, it's the strength of these magnetic forces. The, uh, the magnet, the force is virtually constant. It's not going to increase or decrease that much. What has to, what, it has to be the magnetic field caused around the wire caused by the G1s flowing through. If you remember how the uh, circuits work, the uh, battery adds, the battery adds G1s, 
and the copper wire has to lose lose them and it'll reach a stable point when the number added equals the number lost apparently that's taking a long time and the, most of the examples i've shown before with a normal what i call a normal circuit uh, that's that doesn't take that long. Yeah, it takes a number of cycles to build up to what you want. I think typically some of the numbers have been like 200,000 G1s flowing through a normal circuit before it stabilizes. This is spinning slow and it's taking a long time. What I'm really trying to say here is this is visual evidence. What we have is visual evidence of a spinning armature starting slow, but it's telling us that it's taking three seconds for it to get to a stable point. It's taking three seconds for it to get more and more and more G1s flowing through the wire where it gets stable. Oh, I did a, a, a simple spreadsheet of a one and a half volt battery. Uh, I simulated the resistance of the wire as one and a half ohms. And yes, you're going to pull one amp of current doing that. When I did the calculations using my normal values that I assume 0.1 volts per G1, and this is one times 10 to the minus fifth in this case, and I did a quick calculation. I estimate what it really should have been, and I jump quickly to the answer. So uh, there's a lot of cycles. This shows only about three or four cycles, but there's really 66,000 cycles. I mean, you add them together, and there are 66,532 cycles in this uh, case. And remember, these are all fictitious numbers. And these cycles happens in three seconds. Uh, it implies 45 microseconds per cycle, but don't quite believe that, but can't believe my own numbers. But what you can believe is the process. The process of takes time for this to build up, and so as it builds up, it spins faster and faster. And the number is uh, that uh, at, in the end that it's stabilized is almost, I say, uh, I said 1 million here. 1 million G1s are flowing through here based on these numbers. What the real number is, I don't know. But the three second build up time sort of it, it gives supporting evidence for the concept model where the model, the, the model of the battery is that it adds G1s and it loses G1s and will keep adding and losing until it gets stable and it takes three seconds. That, to me, this is supporting evidence for the particle model. And I got it, it was like a gift. I, I didn't think, I didn't plan it. A few days ago, I, I recognized it and said, wow, that's amazing. A slow spinning armature, supporting evidence. Right hand rule is not a physical explanation. It tells you the direction of the force, but it doesn't tell you what it is. The secondary F2 force caused by two magnetic fields is the explanation for the spinning armature. It tells you and confirms what the direction should be. And that slow start of the armature is supporting evidence of the particle. It's not proof. We don't have direct evidence. What we have is we have direct evidence of a slow spinning armature. But the model itself would have predicted a slow startup because of the time it would take to build that up. I didn't predict it. I found it and then worked backwards to show that it is a supporting proof for the model. My name is Bob D. Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I'll explain more of the universe using the particle model.